Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for April 10th, 2013. On today's show, telerobots give doctors surgical superpowers, a camera takes 3D images from over a half mile away, future addiction treatment could be laser-based, and the bio-optics community backs President Obama's brain mapping initiative. Bladder cancer is the sixth most common cancer in the U.S., but its basic treatment method hasn't changed much in more than 70 years. Engineers and doctors at Vanderbilt and Columbia universities have now developed a prototype flexible telerobotic platform designed to be inserted, hello, through the urethra. The system provides surgeons with a much better view of bladder tumors, so it's easier to diagnose and remove them. The telerobotic system is the size and shape of a large thermos, but its business end is only 5.5 millimeters in diameter, or about one-fifth of an inch. It consists of a segmented robotic arm for flexibility. The tiny arm can curve through 180 degrees, allowing it to point in every direction, including directly back at its entry point. At the tip of the arm is a white light source, a fiber laser for cauterization, as well as a fiberscope for observation and tiny forceps for gripping tissue. The snake-like arm can be controlled with sub-millimeter precision, a level adequate for operating in clinical conditions. Demonstrations have shown that the device can remove tissue for biopsies by gripping with the forceps and then cutting tissue off with the laser. In the future, the team intends to incorporate additional imaging methods to augment the surgeon's natural vision, including a fluorescence endoscope, optical coherence tomography, and ultrasound. A time-of-flight imaging system can now gather high-resolution 3D information from up to a kilometer away from objects typically very difficult to image. In a standard technique called time of flight, a laser beam is bounced off an object and the time it takes the reflected light to travel back to a detector is measured. It is already used in navigation systems like the driverless Google car and in machine vision, but many of these systems have a relatively short range and struggle to image objects that do not reflect laser light well. Now Harriet Watt University physicists have created a system that overcomes these limitations. Theirs resolves depth on the millimeter scale over long distances using a detector that counts individual photons. A key characteristic of the system is its 1560 nanometer wavelength, which travels more easily through the atmosphere, is not drowned out by sunlight, and is eye safe at low power. Such time of flight systems previously could not detect this extra long wavelength. Its primary use will be scanning static man-made targets such as vehicles. With some software modifications, it also could determine a target's speed and direction. Photon counting depth imaging could also be used for remote examination of vegetation and the movement of rock faces. Ultimately, it could scan and image objects located as far as 10 kilometers away, but first it needs to be miniaturized, ruggedized, and made to work faster than its current 5 to 6 minute lag time. The research appeared in Optics Express. By stimulating one part of the brain with laser light, researchers at the National Institutes of Health and UC San Francisco have shown that they can wipe away addictive behavior in rats or, conversely, turn non-addicted rats into addicts. The new study demonstrates the central role the prefrontal cortex plays in compulsive cocaine addiction. It also suggests a new therapy that could be tested immediately in humans. Any new human therapy would not be based on using lasers, but would most likely rely on electromagnetic stimulation outside the scalp. Clinical trials are now being designed to test whether this approach works. The prefrontal cortex is fundamental for impulse control, decision making, and behavioral flexibility. To test whether altering the activity there could impact addiction, researchers employed optogenetics. They took light-sensitive proteins called rhodopsins and used genetic engineering to insert them into neurons in the rat's prefrontal cortex. Activating this region with a laser tuned to the rhodopsins turned the nerve cells on and off. They found that turning on these cells wiped out the compulsive behavior while switching them off turned the non-addicted rats into addicts. They plan to begin clinical trials on people at the NIH in which they will use a technique a few sessions a week to stimulate neurons of cocaine addicts and see if they can restore activity to that part of the brain and help them avoid taking the drug. The work was published in Nature. Scientists and bioengineers, including the inventor of a neuronal control technique involving gene therapy and lasers, voiced support for the BRAIN initiative unveiled by President Obama at a White House press conference last week. The brain mapping research effort aims to revolutionize our understanding of the human mind and to uncover ways to treat, prevent, and cure disorders such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and schizophrenia. Here's President Obama explaining why the initiative is important. You know, as humans, we can identify galaxies light years away, 
We can study particles smaller than an atom, but we still haven't unlocked the mystery of the three pounds of matter that sits between our ears. So today, scientists possess the capability to study individual neurons and figure out the main functions of certain areas of the brain. But a human brain contains almost 100 billion neurons, making trillions of connections. And the most powerful computer in the world isn't nearly as intuitive as the one we're born with. So there, there's this enormous mystery uh, waiting to be unlocked. And the Brain Initiative will change that by giving scientists the tools they need to get a dynamic picture of the brain in action and better understand how we think and how we learn and how we remember. The Brain Initiative is one of the administration's grand challenges and builds on the President's 2013 State of the Union call for historic investments in research and development to spur innovation, job creation, and economic growth. The project is being launched with approximately $100 million in research funding supported by the National Institutes of Health, DARPA, and the National Science Foundation in the President's 2014 budget, which has to be approved by Congress. Attending the press conference were prominent figures from the neurobiology community, including MIT professor Ed Boyden and Carl Deseroth of Stanford. Deseroth invented optogenetics, which we heard about in the last story. The technique uses gene therapy and lasers to allow scientists to control how neurons fire in live animals and indicates how those neurons affect behavior. Other scientific organizations publicly applauding the initiative include the Optical Society and the Max Planck Florida Institute for Neuroscience. That's it for this edition of Light Matters Photonics Media's weekly newscast. As always, you can write to us with your comments or questions at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. I'm currently working on uh, development of some uh, biotechnology instrumentation, and the application for it is to um, test things like uh, proteins and anything that's related to uh, bioactivity of the human body in general. I'm developing optics to project lights from LEDs onto neurons. So the goal is to, do, uh, to stimulate neurons with light and to make it uh, um, yeah, more efficient.